I want to take as my text this morning, a reading from Isaiah, Isaiah's chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. If you're making use of the Pew Bible, you can find that text on page 683, Isaiah's prophecy, chapter 11, and beginning at verse 1, which I'd like us to read again. Isaiah's 11, and beginning at verse 1. The prophet speaking of the coming kingdom and the king that shall rule in it says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, a branch from his root shall bear fruit, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he kill the wicked." Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fatted calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox." The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den, and they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the seas cover this, as the waters cover the sea. And in that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal for the people. And of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. This morning I want to talk about the coming kingdom. The coming kingdom. Indeed, this is a central theme within the season of Advent, in which the name of the season itself indicates such. Indeed, the word Advent from the Latin Adventus means coming, meaning the coming of the Lord. And so this morning I want to talk about the coming kingdom as we look at our text in Isaiah 11. In fact, next week we'll also again be considering the subject of the coming kingdom when we look at Isaiah 35 as our text. And so today is, if you like, uh, the coming of the kingdom part one. And next week we will consider the coming of the kingdom part two. But this morning, the first thing I want us to notice is that the coming kingdom will come with the coming of its king. The coming kingdom will come with the coming of its king. Indeed, you can't have a kingdom without a king. And so the coming kingdom will come with the coming of its king, which king we have described for us by the prophet in verses 1 through 3. Indeed, notice again this description. And there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. And so Isaiah says that the coming king will be a descendant of the family of King David. Indeed, uh, Isaiah describes him here as a shoot that's coming up out of the stump of Jesse, a fruitful branch shooting out of the roots of Jesse. Well, Jesse is David's father. In fact, you see that in a great description in First, uh, first uh, uh, Samuel chapter 16. And, David was the youngest of Jesse's eight sons. And there in Samuel, 1 Samuel 16, you have the anointing of David. You remember the story, you know, God sent Samuel 
uh, to Jesse's house to, to, to anoint the next king, and, and Samuel had to go through all of the brothers, all the first seven brothers, and uh, said to Jesse, God hasn't chosen any of these. Do you have any other sons? And he said, well, we have one son, the youngest. He's out keeping the sheep. Well, we're not going to sit down until you go get him. And so they brought David, and David was anointed king. But, and so all throughout the Old Testament, a, as here, the coming king, or the Messiah, the anointed one, the Messiah in the Old Testament, or the Christos, the Christ in the New Testament, the coming king, the Messiah, is always described as coming from the family of David. In fact, in this same uh, prophecy, in Isaiah chapter 9, perhaps a passage that's more familiar to us than the one that we are really actually taking in its entirety today, Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7, which we will rehearse again on Christmas. But this is what we read. Not a shoot, but described as a child. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and the increase of his government, and the peace of it, there shall be no end. And on the throne of David, and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. And of course, we know this coming king to be our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he's described in just the same way in the New Testament. In fact, I told you last week or a week or so ago, I can't remember, um, Arnold Fruchtenbaum, who is a Jewish Christian uh, leader in the church, and as I was hearing him tell his testimony as how he became a Christian, he He's from uh, Brooklyn uh, and from a Hasidic family, and he knew a Christian person, and this person was uh, trying to tell him about, well, you know, the most Jewish thing you could do is to become a Christian. You know, Jesus is a, is a Jew, you know. Um, and um, so in the process of all of that, uh, this friend of his gave him a New Testament to read. He said, well, why don't you read it and find out for yourself? And, and, uh, and so he read, um, uh, starting at Matthew, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1, where Jesus is described as Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And Arnold Fruchtenbaum said, I stopped at that verse and I said to myself, how Jewish can you get? <laughs> All right? Jesus the Messiah, the son of David. As Jesus is described in the very first verse of what we know as the New Testament. Or in Luke chapter 1, in the famous scene of Gabriel announcing to Mary what God, what plans God had for her. And so in Luke chapter 1 and beginning at verse 30, and the angel said to Mary, Miriam, as she would have been known by her Jewish friends, don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, Yeshua. And he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. You remember Jesus said to the Pharisees, you search the scriptures because you believe that in them you find, you find eternal life. And it's the scriptures that speak of me. <laughs> and here's an example of it. And so the coming kingdom will be Jesus, the Son of God. And Isaiah says that the, that the, that the coming king will be full of the Spirit. In fact, he says that the, that the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. In fact, you remember Jesus uh, preaching in his, uh, the synagogue in his own hometown in Nazareth said that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he went through that passage uh, from Isaiah. And he said, and these words are being fulfilled in your midst through me. 
or in the baptism of Jesus. The same thing, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. We read in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he, he went up out from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest upon him. <laughs> And so Isaiah says that, that, the, that, the, that the king of the coming kingdom, the Spirit of God will rest upon him. And then he describes the Spirit in these various different ways. This Spirit that will rest upon the coming king. He's, the Spirit is described as a spirit of wisdom and understanding, if, if you like, a, a spirit of intellectual prowess. And the spirit of counsel and power, or if you like, the, the, the spirit that gives ability for planning and the power for carrying out those plans. In fact, our God and Jesus Christ is not only willing, he is able to do what he says he will do. And the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord that is, knowledge of God's will and a happy commitment to it. <laughs> Indeed, as Isaiah says it here in our text in verse 3, that the coming king will be a king who delights in the fear of the Lord. He loves doing what God says to do. It's not a burden. <laughs> it's a privilege. And a delight. In fact, um, Jesus speaking, and his words recorded in John chapter 8 and verse 29 said, I do always those things that please the Father. <laughs> and so the coming kingdom will come with the coming of its king, whom we know to be Jesus, the, Mashi the Messiah. Jesus Christ himself. And then Isaiah says that the coming kingdom will be a kingdom of justice. I think I mentioned this maybe last week or the week before. You know, I just, I, I watch the TV and I just see injustices and coming from all directions. And the brokenness of society and broken because <laughs> it's in our hands. In fact, think about that. The, the, our leaders, our kings, our presidents, and senators, and judges, and congressmen, and congresswomen, and, you, you know, we tend to think, you know, just about like, like we're the only country in the world. There are all kinds of countries in the world, and they all have governmental systems. Some of them persecute people like you, openly. But Isaiah says that the coming kingdom will be a kingdom of justice. Notice again verses 3 and 5. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. That's the coming king. And he shall not judge by what, he, what his eyes see or decide disputes merely on what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor or give justice and judge for them. And decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. And righteousness shall be a, the, the belt of his waist, and, the righteous, and, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. It's an interesting picture. We're like, what does that mean? Well, in ancient times they wore loose garments, and everything was held in place by the belt or the sash around the center. And what he's saying here, and this is like behaviors or personal characteristics described in terms of, of, of clothing as garments. And that around the center, and in fact, you weren't prepared to go to work until you put your clothes on and wrap something around the center. Otherwise, everything that you were wearing would get in your way. But he's wrapped about at the center and prepared with righteousness and faithfulness, meaning that he's trustworthy, that you can trust him. Think of that, a king, a politician you can trust. I'm not going to say any more. 
And so the coming kingdom will be a kingdom of justice. And there will be justice for those who previously have been denied justice. And this is because in the coming kingdom, the king serving as judge won't be fooled by the mere appearance of a matter, the narrative that's presented, or by the claims of mere hearsay, not just by what you can see with the naked eye or hear with the ear. Rather, we're told that the in the coming kingdom, the kingdom, the king as judge will see through to the truth in every matter and just judge justly. And so in the kingdom, the kingdom, the king as judge will provide justice to the poor and to the meek, as it's described here. That is to those who are often powerless to defend themselves, to those who are susceptible to abuse and injustice and the the exploitation of those more powerful than them. And so in the coming kingdom, there will be justice for those who previously had been denied justice. And then Isaiah says, and in the coming kingdom, the the wicked will be judged, and and the judgment that they will suffer will be right and good and just. And someone has written, God's judgment isn't just about punishing what is wrong. It's about justice. It's about making things right. Indeed, in the absence of judgment, injustice prevails. And wrong is left unanswered. And there isn't anything good or just or loving about that. And so Isaiah says that the king is judge. When he comes, he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and destroy the wicked with the breath of his lips. The rod of his mouth, it's a metaphor. The breath of his lips, in other words, just by speaking, just by his words, the same one who said, and let there be light, will speak of judgment. And it will be dispatched. It's a striking parallel between this and the description of Christ's return as we have it from John and Revelation chapter 19. In fact, I would just say in passing to encourage you to read the Old Testament. It's the foundation upon which the New Testament is written. (laughs) But in Revelation 19 and beginning at verse 11, we read this striking description of Christ's return. Verse 11, and and John says, And then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And the one who is sitting on it is called Faithful and True. What's the name of that guy? Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, many crowns. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He's clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And the name by which he is called is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Jesus. And the armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, and and white and pure, were following him on white horses. And from his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, a scepter, of iron, and he will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The shoot (laughs) from the stump of Jesse. 
and said, the coming kingdom will be a kingdom of justice. And then Isaiah says, and the kingdom that is coming will be a kingdom of peace. Indeed, notice again, beginning at verse 6, six and, the, and it's an interesting way of describing what peace there will be in the kingdom that is coming. And the wolf shall dwell with the lamb. <laughs> and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The lamb, the kid, the young goat, young animals that otherwise would be the most vulnerable to predatory animals like wolves and leopards. But here they live in harmony and will so in the kingdom that is to come. And the calf and the lion and the fatted calf will dwell together. And a little child shall lead them. It's not even an adult. A child will lead them. And the animals will follow the leadership of a human child. Come on. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> and here comes the leopard and the lion. And the cow and the bear shall graze. And their young shall lie down together. The calves and the cubs. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. No, no more stalking and killing and eating each other. And the nursing child, yet unweaned, shall play over the hole of the cobra. We might otherwise consider a dangerous place. It won't be dangerous in the kingdom. Are you afraid of snakes? Yeah, you know why? Because you're human. Apparently, humans are by nature afraid of snakes. In fact, we have a, there's a, they've done studies on this, that there's a certain, has something to do with the way we, we can see things, with, that, that we have a vision that's especially uh, uh, adapted to see snakes. <laughs> you won't need that kind of vision in the kingdom because they won't harm you. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the wean child, a little older toddler, shall play, put his hand on the adder's den, and they shall not hurt or destroy it all in my holy mountain. That is uh, Jerusalem, the, the place of God's special presence, which seems will be revived in the kingdom yet to come. For the earth, the whole earth, will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea. And so the coming kingdom will be a kingdom of priests. And then finally, Isaiah says that the coming kingdom will be a universal kingdom. Notice verse 10. And in that day, the root of Jesse, the coming king, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall stand as a signal for the peoples. Of him shall the nations inquire. Let's, let's go see him. And his resting place shall be glorious. Isaiah says, in that day, in that day, in the day that the Messiah, the, 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 the root of Jesse comes, he will stand as a signal, as a, literally in the Hebrew, as a banner. If you can think in, in ancient times, then they would signal and say, He will stand as a signal, a banner to the people to come to him, come, and the nations will rally to him. And Isaiah says, and the place of his dwelling will be glorious. In fact, Isaiah describes this scene in greater detail in chapter 2 of his prophecy. Isaiah chapter 2 and beginning at verse 4. And it shall come to pass in the later days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it and many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he, the king, shall judge between the nations and he shall decide disputes for many people. And they shall, this is beautiful, 
They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. A nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And that's what the coming kingdom will be like. Amen. Amen. Lord, and we would pray that you'd make, it, make us worthy. Worthy of it through Christ our Lord. Who saves us by his grace. And who calls us to himself. Come. Come, I want you to be part of this. In fact, until it comes, I want you to be a citizen of my kingdom even as you're waiting for it to come. Lord, may we be respondent to that call and that we wouldn't just think perhaps great thoughts about what's yet to come but be so fascinated by it that we would be truly desirous of it and be willing to do anything that it might be ours. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.